All right, and then the other uh, transformation we're going to talk about today is the vertical shift. So out of A, B, C, and D, which one do you guys think is the vertical shift? B. And it's also, our textbook um, calls it the midline. So you might see that also, midline, baseline. And so that's going to be D. If, if there's a plus D, it's going to shift up. And then if it's a minus D, it's going to shift down. Okay. So on your note sheet, at the very top, we're just going to do some little baby graphs. So I'm just going to graph the parent function for sine and cosine. So it's on your note sheet. You're not going to want to pull out that graph, big graph paper every time. So if we're just going to do a little sine graph, y equals sine of x, and then a little cosine graph. All right. So for the sine, we're just going to go ahead and do a y-axis and an x-axis. The period of, of the parent function is too high, so I would label that on my x-axis. And then about halfway between 0 and 2 pi, pi. And halfway there is pi over 2. And then 3 pi over 2. Those are our like significant points. That's where the, the x-intercepts, the maximum and the minimum values would occur. Okay, and then the parent function of sine has an amplitude of 1, so we would put 1 and negative 1 on the x-axis. Okay, so we did sine a minute ago. Um, was the sine of 0 on the x-axis, or was it at a maximum? Do I remember what the sine of 0 was? It's just zero. So the sign is going to start off with an x-intercept, or it can be on the midline, and then you'll have a maximum, and then an x-intercept, and then a minimum, and then an x-intercept. All baby sign curve. So all other sine curves are going to look something like that, but they're just going to be transformed in some way. All right, let's do a cosine curve. So the x-axis and y-axis should be labeled the same way on our cosine. Do you guys remember what the cosine of zero was? Do we start at the x-axis or do we start up at a maximum? Yeah, it was one. So it's maximum at x-intercept, minimum x-intercept, maximum. Right. And so every cosine curve we graph, so something like this, but just stretched or shrunk or shifted in some way. All right, so the first one we're going to graph is going to be a cosine curve. So it's going to look something like the one we just did. Um, what is the period of this cosine graph? Like, has anything changed the normal period? No. What would change the normal period would be a number in front of x. So, like, the, on our chart, it's b. So there's nothing there. So plus. The period is still going to be 2 pi plus. What about the amplitude? 
yeah, it's changed what it is, is going to be two. So the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of the number in front of cosine, which is two. Okay, so let's look at this graph. Let's just go ahead and draw our axes. So our period is two pi. Mark halfway point those are going to be our significant points for this graph okay, so the difference in this one and the one we just did is um, our y we're going to need to make sure we go up to 2 and down to negative 2 since our amplitude is larger So cosine is Texas Longhorn, and so we start up at the amplitude, up at a maximum, and the next point should be an x-intercept, and then a minimum, and then x-intercepts, and then a maximum. Let's look at the next one. So the next one is a sine curve. What would you guys think the period is? Still too high. Okay. What about the amplitude? That's three. So it's the absolute value of negative three. So what is that negative going to do? The reflection, good, it's the reflection on the x-axis. Now this is going to look like the sine curve, which looks like this one. However, it's going to be flipped over, flipped upside down. All right. So this one, um, we need to make sure our y-axis goes to 3 and negative 3. I'm going to make it a little bit taller. So the sign of zero is always zero. So I'm going to start on an x-axis. And then normally on sign, the next significant point is the maximum. But for negative sign, what should it be? Minimum. So we would have a minimum, then an x-intercept, then a maximum, then an x-intercept. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is um, look at an equation or look at a function and find all the little parts to it that we've talked about so far and then write a function that is this equation. Um, so we're going to first find the amplitude, midline, and period. So if it was me, I would start with the midline. So the midline is what cuts the graph in half. So what y value do you think cuts the graph in half? One. So our midline is going to be one. Okay, and then if we, if we look back at our table of information, the midline is associated with d. So that means that Z is going to be 1. All right. 
then let's find our amplitude. So the amplitude is going to be the distance between the midline and the highest point. So what do you guys think? So what that means is that A, if we look back at our chart, A is 2. All right, now we haven't talked about shifting left or right right now. So if we're just starting at 0, would you guys say this looks like a sine or a cosine? We're just starting at 0. Cosine. And what I highlighted was one period of cosine. So what is the period? Four pi. So you only look at the one cycle. So look at what I highlighted. So the period is four pi. So we, what we need to do now is figure out B. So this is how you get the period. So that means this is equal to 4 pi. Or 4 pi is equal to that, however you want to write it. So what do you do to solve that for B? Now we have everything we need to write this equation or write this function. So you can start with y equals f of x equals g of x, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it y. All right. And then looking at your, your little chart, the next thing you would put would be your a, which is 2. And then we all agree that that looks like a cosine graph, so we're going to do cosine. And then multiply your b by x, and then add the b. That is, that is an equation for that graph. Now, there is more than one. But for what we know right now, this is the one we can do. All right, now do another one. Now we're doing a lot in one day, but it's good for you. OK, so sure. So you guys look at the next graph and think of, we're starting from zero because we haven't talked about left or right and decide if you think it looks like a sine curve or if it looks like a cosine curve. So from zero to the right, which one do you guys think it looks like? It looks like a sine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight one period of the sine curve. So a sine curve starts in the middle, goes to a maximum. Back to middle, back to minimum. So that right there should be one period of sine. All right, so let's start like we did before with the midline. Where do you guys think the midline is? Negative four. So D is negative four. And then we need to find the distance from the midline to the highest point. What is that? Three. Okay. All right. What else? Period. So I highlighted one period. So how long is it? Two. From zero to two. So that's a period of two. So what that means is 2 should be equal to 2 pi over b. 
And do you guys remember that rule when we were doing trigonometry and I was like, if the variable's down low, you're going to switch, you know? Will that work here too? Yeah. So you can do it that way if you want to switch or just solve it, whatever. Either way you do it, B is going to be pi. So we're ready to put everything in to our A, B, C, D, or no C yet. We'll talk about C tomorrow. All right, so amplitude is first, and then we agree this looks like a sine, and then B goes in front of X, and then D, your midline, is subtracted at the end. So again, we haven't talked about shifting left and right. So starting at zero, would you guys think that this looks more like a sine or more like a cosine? It looks more like a cosine. However, it's like horns down, Texas longhorn horns down, so it's a negative cosine. Do you guys find the midline, amplitude, and period on your own, please? Slightly tricky on the A. Um, the amplitude is definitely two, but because this was a negative cosine, the A is negative two. That's what we're going to put in for us. Okay, and then let's find what we're going to put in for B. So five should be equal to two pi over B, and then you can just switch those B and pi. So you have all the things that we need. We just write the right number to be great. So once you figure out the middle, it's going to be the distance from the middle to the highest point. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So you basically your assignment is exactly what we just did with different problems. So two little graphs to do, and then three where you're writing the equation. Sure. Okay. All right, let me write your answer, your problem, not your answer, it's your assignment. It's page 409, 2 through 10, even. 